Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Our video today is about Jordan and the ruler of Jordan, so-called King Abdullah. First of all, to give you a brief uh, history, those are not royal, they never been royal, they are Bedouin from the desert, brought by the British intelligence, and they use them in order to divide and conquer uh, the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire controlled a huge part of the Middle East, including the countries who speak Arabic. So the British intelligence, they said, well, the only way to divide them, those Muslims, is to bring someone. He claimed that he is descendant from Prophet Muhammad, police be upon him, and he will get support, and it will it work. So they launched something called the revolutionary, the, the big revolutionary, uh, of the Arab, which is false, really, it had nothing to do with the Arab. It was just the British intelligence uh, leading a bunch of Bedouin. And because the Ottoman Empire was so weak already, collapsing, they have really, it's, a, it's just, a, you know, authority by name. So they were able to take over a huge part of the Middle East, like Jordan, Syria, uh, Iraq. And then they made the person who is the grandfather of this man, uh, the king on uh, in Syria. But he is no king, they are not royal, and they are really trashy, trashy family. Uh, and all their history, you know, is about corruption. Even their first father, who is supposedly became the king, he was nobody, and he used to take a salary every month from the British intelligence, every month, even after he became a king. Uh, because, you know, he have no income, really. I mean, he's, a, he's just a Bedouin, uh, who claimed that he is descended from Muhammad. All, all the point is, that he is supposedly descendant from Muhammad police be upon him. Now, the connection between what's happening today and that history is the following. You will hear the news that King Abdullah, he is so terrified about the idea that Hamas or Palestinian, the two million or more, they will go to Jordan or to Egypt. Uh, now, he don't care really about Egypt, but he's worried about coming to him. So he screamed, there is no way we will not accept, and the purpose supposedly is to defend the rights of those people who they are living there. The fact this is not true. He is so terrified because already the majority, more than, I, I believe more than 70% already in Jordan are Palestinians. In fact, he himself, he had to marry a Palestinian woman after what happened with his father. Now what happened with his father? And why he married a Palestinian woman? He married a Palestinian woman, so Palestinian will not see him or his coming son to be a king as a stranger, because the son now will be half Palestinians, so they will not, you know, revolt against him. However, 1970, what happened at that time? The Black September. In the Black September, uh, Jordan launched a war against the Palestinian in Jordan. In fact, they brought even fighters from Pakistan and even, I believe, from Israel to help them to control uh, uh, the authority of Yasser Arafat. So the Israeli, they help uh, uh, Pakistan and other countries, like, you know, maybe they are not important to mention, but even Turkey helped uh, Jordan uh, to subdue those uh, uh, Palestinians. The reason Turkey did that, because Yasser Arafat was not in a good relationship with, the, at that time, they are liberals, uh, government. So anyway, and he, you know, he kidnapped airplane, etc., and even he was uh, uh, making risk and a threat against the Turkish airline. So many forces joined together with the King of Jordan at that time, King Hussein, and in 1970, they killed thousands and thousands of Palestinians, including women and children. In this image, you will see the Palestinian using even children in the war with Jordan. As you see in the image here, if you look at this image, you will see this guy is just a child. As you see, holding a, a machine gun, it's called Cenobal. So the, uh, 
Palestinian, they wanted to take over uh, Jordan because now they become the majority. Yasser Arafat is in control. He is more important than the king. Uh, he gets support by hundreds of millions of dollars, which is the Jordanian don't have. So let's say he have more even equipment than Jordan itself. However, because Jordan gets support from other forces to eliminate the control and the possibility of the Palestinian taking over Jordan, they were able to be victorious and kill tens of thousands. Now the numbers, and not only that actually, in, in 1970, the war started at the beginning and he killed a lot of them, but was not that was not enough to stop the Palestinian from doing more harm to Jordan. During that time, after the war started between the Palestinian and Jordanian started, uh, the president of Egypt was uh, Abdul Nasser. Abdul Nasser is a dreamer. You know, he thinks he is going to be like the caliphate and etc. And uh, the Middle East at that time have a high respect for him. Most of the Muslims in the Middle East. Even though, by the way, he killed a lot of Muslim Brotherhood, which means he is the first enemy of Hamas because they attempt to kill him. And actually, I believe they are the one who killed him. The images we see, this is all the Palestinian. They have centers everywhere in Jordan. And as you see, they have a sign. I mean, it's like nobody dare to tell them why you are having weapon in the street. Uh, they can arrest anyone they want. And this is exactly what they did the same in Lebanon too. In Lebanon, they did exactly the same. And until Israel came to the south of Lebanon and even to Beirut and sent them all the way to Tunisia, if you remember. So they started doing the same movie in Jordan and they did control many territory and the king and the police of the king they have no they don't even dare to go there as you see here this is what it's called palestinian liberation organization 1970 they have tanks can you believe it they have tanks actually they have tanks more than jordan they have they have tanks more than the country army so the Jordanian army don't have as much they have this is why they said okay you know what we, we, we can kill them all and we can kill this king and we can take over and this is what the plan but the plan did not work as they wish because many international uh, forces involved and uh, thousands of fighters from Pakistan they came to help the uh, the Jordanian and uh, uh, we do not know exactly who is the one who paid for those came from Palestine because all of them, they are just, uh, they are not supporting him because they like him. They are just for money. In fact, until now, Jordan have a lot of air, uh, like uh, Air Force pilot. I even during the war with Israel, 1973, the Jordanian, more than 50% of their pilot were back, back from Pakistan. So they have like a special uh, uh, connection with Pakistan and uh, uh, they always support them in that field. However, uh, the King of Jordan, he was able to control them in 1970 and he killed a lot of them by the help of other international forces, as we mentioned. And then the president of Egypt, Abdul Nasser, he got involved and he made them shake hands. As we see in the picture, this is King Hussein in the right. This guy, Arafat, I don't know, he looked weird, really. I mean, this is, <laughs> and by the way, he is not even Palestinian. You believe it or not, the leader of the Palestinian, he is not Palestinian. <laughs> anyway, so he made them shake hands, but as usual, you know, Arab, they shake hands, but they kill each other second day. So they shake hands, but then uh, uh, the one in the middle, Abdul Nasser, he died. He was killed, actually, not long after. And the war started again between the King of Jordan and the Palestinian in 1971. In 1971, the same scenario repeated. And about between 3,500 to 5,000 in that year, Palestinian, including women and children, as the report says, and you know, I don't really trust any report, but this is the information there. 
it says that they were killed by the military of Jordan. And here we ask ourselves, how come if the Palestinian, they try to take over in a place, we kill them, and it's okay. And if they are getting killed in different place, it's not. How come, as an example, Hassan Nasrallah, the Hezbollah, they were killing Palestinians who support what is called revolution against the Assad in Syria, and they are killing Hamas, specifically Hamas in Syria, and they are killing the Muslim Brotherhood, which is Muslim Brotherhood, it's Hamas in Syria, but they are supporting Hamas in Israel. So the story is not what people think. They don't really care for the Palestinian, Iran, and Hezbollah, and the King of Jordan. All of those scumbags, they are using those for a purpose of their own agenda. Iranian, they want to spread Shiaism between the Muslim Sunni. And they notice, since they announced that they are the enemy of Israel, and Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, as you see, this is behind him in his office, the picture of Al-Khomeini and the leader who became after him, the leader right now in Iran. So those people, they don't hide even they belong to who. And the whole idea is, if we say we hate Israel, we want to kill every Jew, that will make the Muslims support us around the world, even though they hate Shia, but that will make us have a reputation. And actually they were able to convert a lot of Muslim Sunni into Shiaism, during the last, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 20 years, especially after the Israeli withdrew from the south of Lebanon because of a stupid politics. And then Hezbollah, they presented themselves as the, as the one who bring victory against the Israeli, which is absolutely false. You know, the Israeli, they left because they have no, no interest to stay there no more. The same as uh, the, the American, they left uh, uh, Afghanistan because what for? Why would I stay? It's just costly. There's nothing spending money for nothing however hezbollah claimed victory and that made them uh, 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 feel that it was a very successful uh, uh, let us say uh, plan because they noticed how many muslim sunni they converted to shiaism after they did that self-acclaimed victory and now it's the same they are supporting hamas in israel but they are killing Hamas in Syria. They are supporting Muslims in Israel, but they are killing Muslims, Sunni, in Syria. They are supporting all kind of armed forces in Israel, but anyone who is armed forces against the Assad regime in Syria, they will kill him. Same they do in Iraq. The Muslim Sunni, they are slaughtered, killed. They've been driven out of their territory. Uh, they are not even allowed to visit the, the grave of Saddam Hussein, you know. If you visit Saddam because for the Sunni, Saddam Hussein was a hero. So this is a very Iranian regime, uh, uh, like a mafia, gang, and they earn reputation by the help of the Israeli. Uh, to make it simple, the stupid politics always play a role, play a role to make terrorists flourish. In fact, all of them, they practice the same thing. They support terrorism when they want. Netanyahu, as an example, he supported terrorists in Syria who they were fighting Hezbollah. And <laughs> the game they play here, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. But we know that Hamas never been and never was the friend of Israel. But Netanyahu himself, he supported Muslim Brotherhood, which is Hamas in Syria. And this is a great example not to, to anyone in the future think about such a plan. Supporting evil will do nothing except to bring in evil to you back. So this is why I wanted to make this video to show you that the King of Jordan, the President of Egypt, all those kings around, they don't want Palestinians to come to their lands. Because the first thing they do, they bring disaster to the country. They don't want anyone. They will, they will take over. You bring them over as refugees. You take care of them, you feed them, you shelter them, you give them a free housing, you give them a free school, you give them free health insurance, and then they want to kill the king and take over the land. And Hezbollah itself, and 
another Shia group, it's called Harakat uh, uh, Amal, the movement of Amal. They surrounded the Palestinian camps. If you do little search, you will find that the Shia militant, Hezbollah and Harakat Amal, both they did siege the Palestinian in Beirut for more than a year actually. And I'm talking about totally siege, no food, no water, nothing. To the point, they were eating the dead bodies. And here you see Hezbollah itself and the Shia in Lebanon, they are so angry for the siege of Israel on Gaza for a week. So they don't mind. And they were killing them from 1984 to 1990. Any Palestinian, he leave the camp, they shoot him in the head immediately. And the siege was extremely tough, to the point, I'm serious, they eat dead body of each other. And this is the same group now, they are trying to defend the Palestinians in Israel. So this video is just to show you the hypocrisy of all those neighbors. All of them, they hate the Palestinians. All of them, they are hate mongers. And all of them, they justify their reasoning. They will say to you, they are bad. They are disgusting. They want to take over our land. They want to compete with us. They come as refugee, and then now they want to take over, blah, blah, blah. All, you know, justified. But what the Israeli doing now in Gaza is not justified. So the king of Jordan hate them. The government of Egypt, they jail tens of thousands of Muslim Brotherhood, which is Hamas. And then you will see the president of Egypt speaking about a human right. Tell yourself first, how many of them you put in jail? He will say to you, well, they are terrorists. <laughs> so they are terrorists in Egypt, but they are freedom fighters in, in, in Israel. This is how hypocrite those people are. So I hope this video was useful for you to learn a little bit about the history of this area. And I will be happy to see you guys sharing the link with people so they can see the truth and learn about the Middle East. You know, uh, uh, we, don't, we don't hate a group of people because of their ethnic, but the Lord said, from their fruits you shall know them. And the fruit of all those groups is ugly bad it is disgusting bad thank you very much for watching leave your comment tell me what do you think and may the lord bless you take care